So over the years, I've had, I'm, it's gonna boil down to hundreds of questions about equipment. Dog training equipment, photography equipment, feeding equipment, on and on. So I decided I was gonna have a little movie on the equipment that I use. And um, it's pretty, when I started thinking about it, it, it's pretty interesting. When I first started as an adult trying to make a living, I was a photographer and I had two cameras. I had a Leica M3 and I had a Hasselblad 500C. And I photographed sailboats racing in San Francisco Bay, and I used the Hasselblad for that. And all the rest of the work, I used the Leica. Well, that was all film cameras. Today, it's all digital. And um, if you watch my blog, at the end of my message, I have a Christian, a scripture, gospel message, and I have a photograph that relates to that message. So I'm still very involved in photography, and um, one of the things I've noted about almost any endeavor is people have a lot of equipment, and sometimes, to me, they have too much equipment. Like this right here is my entire photography kit, other than a tripod, which I didn't bring out. But So I've got a couple of Leicas that I use um, to take pictures. So I have a picture that goes with my gospel message. And this is my favorite right here. Um, that's it. <laughs> this bag is it. And so in dog training, it's the same thing. You know, people have so much equipment. You know, in photography, I'd go and have workshops and people would come and um, they'd have so much equipment, they weren't taking pictures, they were wrestling with equipment. Which lens should I use? Oh, what do you think about this lens, is it? No, get a camera and start taking pictures. Don't worry about the equipment. The equipment is nothing. The eye is what is important. And I guess the same thing is sort of involved in dog training. People have enormous quantities of equipment. And I watch people sometimes and they spend almost all their time moving and shuffling equipment. I don't spend my time in the dog training situation with equipment. I spend it with the dog. So I'll show you what equipment I have and it's all I have. My idea is to have one bag, just like my camera bag, I want one dog training bag. And I got a brand new one. It's right here. This is it. Now, this is my old one. I've had this one for 25 years. It's very old, it's faded. It used to be a nice, beautiful, dark green. Now it's tan, bleached from the sun. But I've had a little bit of seamstress work on it, but basically it's been great. <clears throat> the only trouble with it is I really couldn't get all of my equipment in. I could get all my, my uh, collars and stuff in it, but I couldn't get my bumpers in it. My new bag, it's all here. I leave town with this I got it all the only thing I don't I mean this is it so <clears throat> I'm gonna go through what's in here um, so you can see and it's it's not a big revelation everybody has this equipment except I just have it in this bag and <clears throat> so starting with bumpers you know um, 
I use bumpers a lot because I do a lot of drills and I do a lot of training by myself and I need bumpers. One of the drills is the seven bumper lining drill that I, I use, so I need some of these big white bumpers, seven of them. And so it's very important to me to have those. I also have to have little white bumpers because that's what you do drills with. I get these um, Avery bumpers, you know, over the years I've probably used every kind of bumper that's been made from Newman and Bended, Hallmark. I don't know who else even makes bumpers, but this is the best bumper ever made right here. It's light, it's soft, it's got good, dogs can carry it easy. The only thing that I do different is the ropes that come with, with the Avery bumper is about this long, it's about that big around, and I take those ropes off and put my own ropes on because they're exactly the kind of rope that I want and need. They're um, six millimeter accessory cord is what it's called and you can get it from New England rope. So any rope I get comes from New England rope. If you said my name to New England rope, they would have never heard of me, but I get a lot of rope from New England rope and it's six millimeter accessory cord, they have different colors. I like orange because you can see it in the grass. So bumpers, um, I also have um, some small orange that I use in, like if I'm doing um, some close marks and I have, I want the, the bumper to be in the grass hidden so the dog has to find it with their nose. Then I have um, large orange, for, down in there somewhere, for throwing marks at a, at a long distance. So um, the, um, the bumpers are a big part of my training and I've got, I've got them in here. So I'm gonna go through the other stuff that's in this bag because I can train a field champion with what's in this bag and I don't need anything else. So we'll start with, since we mentioned New England rope, um, I like this brand new bag. I got this from Avery too. Um, this rope right here is about seven feet long. It's got a snap here. Um, I could train a dog without an electric collar, but I could not train one without a rope. This rope makes it so you can control a dog online and get them to do what you want without grabbing them and having a big, big dance online. It's just easier with a rope. So the other thing I have that's sort of related to that is a regular leash. Now I have this. I hardly use it, but I have it. If I'm in traffic somewhere and I'm afraid I'm gonna get my dog run over or something, I have a watermark retriever's leash that takes up no space and I have it. Um, so, I have a whistle, which everybody has, I have one. People say, oh, what kind of whistle do you use? Well, I was using a Fox 40 for years. And I got to so much flack about it because they said it was too loud around the line. So I did go to the P-less whistle that I now, and I only have one, I don't even have a backup for it, but <clears throat> it works fine. It works good at long, long range. Um, I have some orange tape and so when you're setting up a test, you must mark where the fall is because when I train, I want a fall to land in a specific place. I don't want somebody just slinging a, a, a bird or a bumper out. I want to know where it's going to be exactly. Um, so I've got orange tape. The other thing I have 
is a toenail clipper. You know, a lot of people neglect clipping toenails and it can cause injury. It, it's ugly to look at big dogs, dogs with real long toenails, especially when they get older. And if you keep them trimmed, you don't have to go to the vet to have a great big long toenails cut. So I've got that. <clears throat> I have one dog boot which if I would have an injury to a foot, or to cut a pad, any number of things. Sometimes I wish I had four of them so if the ground is really rough I could put all four on but this is I just have for emergency and but I have it. <clears throat> Hoppy's number nine, my little gun cleaning kit miniature. You know, this is very cute. I got this at Cabela's, but it's a tiny little kit. Clean your little gun. And, but it's important to have because when you need it, you need it. This contraption here, again, it's got the six millimeter accessory cord in a little loop with a choke chain hanging on the end. This is what I use at a field trial when I'm getting a dog to a holding blind or walking around. It can be um, used as a choke chain. If I'm going offline, I can take this thing and put it like this quickly and get the dog hooked up and I can walk offline. And the value of this for me is that it's this big. I can put it in my pocket and it's not some big long leash that I've used. So this is kind of critical for me. I have two Tritronics electric collars. <clears throat> um, the reason I use these is because it has both, well, I've used them for many years and Tritronics company has supported me. I, I remember when I did my very first video in 2008, Tritronics sent me a couple of collars to use in that video and consequently um, I stick with them. I've used others, I've tried them out, but I always end up with um, Tritronics. So I have two of them in case one uh, quits working, which doesn't happen very often, I can tell you that. So we've got two of those. They're in here. Where's the other one? I have this other model. It's a little bitty one, but it, it works the same, but it has both the tone and vibration on it. Tone and vibration is important to me because I'm working with that more and more. You know, uh, this lady, Vicki Lamb, has spent a lot of effort designing an entire training program based on tone and vibration. And she gets dogs to operate on tone and vibration at huge distances, hound dogs and retrievers. So I'm pretty interested in that because, as you know, I'm very happy to work with things that are low pressure, if they work. So, backup collar, they have tone and vibration connected to them. Um, the other thing I have, is a, this is a, oh, I've got a, a bag here that you can haul stuff in, dead birds, bumpers, whatever you want, and I, I have that with me because you need, you need a bag once in a while to put stuff in. Um, the other thing I have is two, I call them talkers, but they're, I guess they're walkie-talkies, uh, technically. And I use these um, Midlands because they have the features I want, which is an, a dial to turn it on and off. And it's easy to change channels and 
this for press to talk, plus it has a belt clip. I've got to have those things, and it's amazing. Try dog training without one of these things, and these are compatible with most of the better type of um, talkers, and you need them. So I have two because what if the other guy doesn't have one? I have to have loan of mine. Of course, I have the red uh, top on mine, so I try to get it back. So that's that's that. And I think I think that's my entire equipment. So there you have it. Everything's in this bag right here. I can pick this up when I leave town or home to go training. I take this, I've got everything. I didn't forget anything because everything's got a spot in there. So that's that. Um, one more thing I'm gonna cover, I do this about every three or four years, is talk about feeding because I get so many questions about it. Before I go any further, <clears throat> I deal with companies that I appreciate. So Avery, for instance, I get all, almost every bit of dog training stuff I use at, almost all of that comes from Avery. Tritronics. In the dog feeding, subject, I use Purina. Why do I use Purina? Well, because they support almost every dog sport there is. They've done almost all the research that's done in dog food. Now, a lot of people want what I call designer dog foods. They, they have this or they have that or they're whatever. So that's fine. I, first of all, I need something I can get on the road anywhere Purina, 20, 30, salmon and rice. I get it everywhere, it's all I use. The other thing I do is this stuff right here, sports dog. Um, I've used this since I first found out about it. I've reported to you frequently about it. Now this particular jar right here, I don't know what you do to get one of these. I was able to get one Almost everybody I know that uses Sports Dog puts it in a coffee can. This company, Doctor's Choice, finally came out with a jug, but I don't know if you can get one. You know, they have gotta be extremely expensive because they're very hard to, to come by. I was thinking about just asking if I could just have the labels so I could put them on coffee cans and then I'd know what what was going on. But anyway, I was trying to be funny a little bit, but this is a magnificent prod product. Every dog I have, every dog that I've trained, every person I know gets a complete lecture on using this. So my, my feeding program involves using Phytovite, sports dog, then on top of that, in the morning, I put an egg, a raw egg, <clears throat> mix it together with a little hot water. That's breakfast. At dinner time, <clears throat> I use one of several things, either sardines. Now I use these, um, I try to find sardines that are 88 cents a piece, but now I can't because they've gone up to 92 cents. But Sardines, when I find them, I get as many as they have, cases at a time, sardines. But I don't always use sardines because sometimes I use salmon. I like it because it's a little different once in a while. The dogs seem to think it's fabulous. I hate to tell you this, but sometimes I'll open a can like this and I'll eat about a half of it myself with a fork and then I give the rest to the dog because this is a little much for one dog. But anyway, this would actually 
if you were at home and you could put it in the refrigerator, you could f feed a dog three meals with one can. When I'm using the sardines, if there were two dogs, I'd split the can with them, but in my situation, I have one dog right now, gets the whole can, 88 cents. Um, the other thing I do, and I do it frequently, and nobody's, I, I don't want anybody mad at me, but if I have some high quality leftovers, especially meat, I throw it in the food at night, or vegetables, you know, I don't think you can overdo vegetables with a dog. They love them to start with. A lot of people swear by them. They just feed uh, green beans and broccoli and everything. I used to get the frozen packages that had cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots in. I'd give them part of a package. So sardines, salmon, sports dog, and broccoli. I can't remember ever putting a, a, a pan of dog food down with that's the only thing in the bowl. It always has these other items in, plus an egg in the morning. You know, an egg has more vitamins in it practically than any other thing, unless you wanted to give them part of an avocado. Also, one, one other item that I think is very important, you know, the last post that I did on my um, YouTube channel and on my website, I had Pam Wilson on, and we this topic was teaching fetch with the electric collar as opposed to teaching fetch with the uh, with ear pinch. So this is a very very important topic to many people. There's a lot of controversy about it. And I've done a DVD which explains how you teach fetch with the electric collar. One of the reasons that I do this is because all the rest of their training is done with the electric collar. You know, if a dog doesn't get in the water out of about 350 yards, I almost never see a, somebody racing out there and pinching their ear and saying, hey, you get in the water. The ear pinch is such a separated thing that I struggled many, many years ago to figure out a way around it, and I did. Um, and I'm not the only one, by the way, and I didn't invent the idea of not using ear pinch. Um, one of the people that's really a student of retriever training is Dennis Voigt. He's got his own set of DVDs and he's worked with Mike Lardy a lot and he's done a lot of his own work. Um, and he has done extensive writing about force fetch and what his ideas are on it. And he also has a pretty, to me, a very beautifully done review on my Fetch Command DVD. So I think anybody that's interested in that topic should go below and there's a link to Dennis's material. And I think as a just an, just for interest, I would go and read it anyway because there's some, I think uh, some other philosophical points that are brought out, I think that are very, very important from Dennis. So stick with me. One more important message coming up. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber.